Hi, my name is Ron Laherty. I am culinary development chef for Ms. Can Euro. This recipe is a twist on a Chinese Sichuan recipe, marbo tofu. The recipe itself is marbo popcorn, cauliflower and tofu. Bit of a mouthful, but it works. We will first go to the sauce. Basically what I've done is taken uh, the marbo tofu, broken it down, so some of the components are tofu. I've replaced the pork with cauliflower, uh, and I'm gonna make the sauce, and I'm gonna keep the sauce separate. So essentially, it is, it's vegetarian. So, what I have, I'm gonna turn the heat on. I have a small pan. In this pan, I'm gonna add some water. You can use stock, but water is fine. Sugar, cucumber vinegar, and the mirin, as per the recipe. Now. You add that and you bring it to the boil, slowly. To that, you add your tobanjan. Now, if you can't get tobanjan, use a little bit of miso paste and some chili sauce. It's essentially the same. It's a fermented chili bean paste. And then to that, your 150 grams of common garden black bean sauce. You can use a packet, you can use a tin, or you can make it yourself. Now, you may find, it, you bring it to the boil, you may have a few lumps, which you, you may quite be happy with. Right, so you bring that to the boil. Have a look at it. If the consistency is fine for you, then leave it as it is. If you want it a bit thicker, then please use some cornstarch with a little bit of water just to thicken it up. Now, when you've done, literally you just bring it to the heat. When you've done, turn it off, put it to one side, let it cool. Put it in a container, like so. You want it chilled because it will set the beans and the, the miso in the tobanjan will set it a little bit and it will give you a nice sauce consistency to go over the top of your cauliflower dish. With your cauliflower, if you cut out your center stem, basically this is a Asian fusion dish and a kind of, kind of street food dish, so you wanna think about your pieces of cauliflower being bite size, mouth size. You don't want big ones. I mean, if you can get a cauliflower with small florets, more so the better. Then you just literally pick them apart. Bigger ones you can cut. If you take the stems off as well, you tend to get smaller ones, all right? So if you go through the whole thing, picking off your little florets, if they're too big, if the stalks are too big, then literally just cut them in half. So you want, you want a sort of bite-sized piece. So go through, pick all your bits. Now over there in the bowl, there's your vinegar, your shirogoku vinegar, that wonderful pickling umami liquid. It's actually because it's so light, it picks up flavors so easily. I mean, with lots of heavier uh, vinegars, it takes a long time for them to pick up flavors. But So I have here, Sichuan peppercorns, straight in. Chili flakes, straight in. And a bit of salt, because it's a brine. Not forgetting you have water in with the vinegar as well. So there's your flavorings. Now you can use, you can keep this and use it and store it. So you only want a little kick. Give it a stir. and you can leave it for about an hour. Uh, I wouldn't leave it any longer. The longer you leave it, the more it becomes a pickle. Whereas at the moment, it's just a sort of adding a fresh umami, zingy shirigiku kick to the cauliflower. And then when it gets uh, deep fried, it still retains that, that taste. Okay. One hour, take your cauliflower out. Put it to one side, you're gonna fry. 
Now that's been sitting for one hour. Now this is a garnish to go on top of your iceberg lettuce. Cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, put them in the same liquid. You don't want to leave these longer than 10 minutes. If we fry the cauliflower, we can cut the tofu at the same time. Now, what I have is a mixture of plain flour, corn flour, and tapioca flour. Now, corn flour and tapioca flour are much higher in starch and will give a little bit crispier finish. Plain flour is quite dense and doesn't give it quite enough of a crispy finish, but you're not going to worry too much about crispiness. So, cauliflower into your flour mix and we're at 180. So if you don't happen to have a fryer, I mean, you can do what I actually did before, is uh, you can use a, a saucepan with a basket and in that saucepan you have your oil and you bring your oil to, if you can get it to 170, 180, then that gives you a bit of leeway. If you bring it too high, um, it's, it's, it goes too quick. Being it slightly lower, you can see it's only just starting to fry a little bit. Electric is good because it has a thermostat. Gas, just be aware of the gas level. Don't go anywhere higher than medium. At least with a cooker, you have the safety aspect of it having a built-in thermostat. Three minutes will do it. Then move over to your tofu. So remembering you're gonna be mouthful sizes. So this is a firm tofu. You tend to get three different types. There's a very soft, there's the medium, and then there's a firm. I go for the firm when frying because you get a nice coating on the outside and the soft one tends to get a bit mushy and end up with a fryer full of bits. So I cut the half and half and then with a lot of Japanese cooking, I cut the half and half again. I cut the half and half again. Now remembering that these are going to be bite sizes. So take that like that. That's quite nice actually. Now you can go down a bit further. In fact, I think I will because remembering you're going to have flour on the outside. So don't go any smaller than that because you want to be able to have that tofu softness with the outside. And this is in fact a variation on a Japanese dish with the um, deep fried tofu and add sesame oil and other bits. So, again to your flour. Put your tofu into the flour. Check on your cauliflower, that should be about three minutes. Open her up and then you can see you've got that nice golden brown. So let it drip for a bit. There shouldn't be that much oil on the outside with the flour. Back to your fryer with your tofu. You want to shake off as much of the flour as possible. It's not going to do anything to the tofu, it just means you have less bits and pieces of fried flour bits at the bottom of your fryer. You don't want to end up cleaning it every time you use it. The less the stuff you actually put in the oil, the longer it stays, stays cleaner. There we go, close it, three minutes. Just shredding some lettuce. Iceberg is nice and crisp. This is just to go on your plate next to the cauliflower and the tofu. So, twist it there. Turn to your tofu. Tofu should be done. Give it a shake. There we go. Now it's got a nice crisp on the out. Oh yeah, that's nice. Right, let that drain. Sit it next to your cauliflowers. So, now have your iceberg. Now turn to your cherry tomatoes. Don't worry if there's some bits of chili or peppercorn on it. It all adds to the extra surprise to the customer. You don't need too many. The tomatoes will pick up the sort of mellow richness of the vinegar. This is half the reason for using it, obviously. Now, you have, you could either put cauliflower, tofu, or 
You can mix the two together. I tend to put a little bit like that, a little bit of tofu, a little bit like that. Like that. Now remembering this is not, there's not many carbohydrates in here apart from the flowers used for frying. So quite a substantial portion is, is quite, I mean, that's quite a nice portion there. Right, that's your cauliflower. That's your tofu, deep fried. Now you've got your sauce, which is cooled down now. Now, just dribble it over the top like that. Now the background, Shirogiku and the peppercorns in the sauce will match the background shirigiku and peppercorns in the pickling of the brine and the crispiness will go with that. Now also, marbo dofu isn't marbo dofu without some spring onions. And there you have it. Marpo popcorn, cauliflower and tofu with marpo sauce. <laughs>